uh, the idea of next of kin may be a, a little bit hazy and wind. And also, uh, I think we could be sometimes uh, not necessarily be talking of next of kin. Yeah. In, in particular case, case when he's talked about uh, a young person who has suddenly got into money mm -hmm. and doesn't know how to manage it. I don't think that it has to be managed by a next of kin. Mm -hmm. He can appoint a manager. Right. Because next of kin, from the way you are, you are giving somebody uh, a right okay. to manage, like, you, like particularly to act on your behalf. Uh, to on your behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to act on your. No, no, no. Uh, in, the, in this particular case, I, what, I, what I'm asking is yeah. management of just business. I don't think necessarily you must uh, appoint a next of kin to manage your business. Okay. Because you can appoint a manager. Right. Uh, next of kin, necessarily, the way I understand it, it involves a lot of trust. Mm. Uh, it is somebody who I think, uh, it is somebody who you think in your own capacity, uh, before you, you drag somebody you can entrust. Somebody next of kin, you can actually appoint, you can appoint somebody, not necessarily your spouse, yes. not necessarily, because you, you can entrust them to manage your properties mm -hmm. on, or other matters in, right. in your absence. Okay, your this, absence. this is interesting. Uh, Jared is watching here and he is saying, my mother is my next of kin. Maku, I am married. <laughs> and he goes ahead to say, I was surprised to learn that my last born brother considered me as his next of kin. Ha 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 ha, he laughs about it. Do we really understand the concept of what a next of kin is? Are we confusing this with inheritance? Are we confusing this with, just what exactly is this? Uh, thanks, Linda. Um, the concept of the next of kin, two things, legally speaking. Yeah. One, there is the inheritance front. We are talking about what happens to my belongings, to my properties after my demise. Mm -hmm. Then, for medical reasons, um, perhaps you, 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 know, you, 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 you lack the mental capacity yeah. to decide and consent to a, to a treatment, for instance. Mm -hmm. That is where um, uh, doctors will ask you, um, person to medical law, that perhaps your spouse or somebody from your family should consent for you. Mm -hmm. So there's that aspect of, um, for medical reasons right. and now for inheritance reasons. Um, just to respond to the question from my, my brother, about investment right. and the age factor um, as far as minors are concerned, um, it's not really a next of kin. I look at it from a perspective of investment management. Yeah. Mm. So it's a manager to mm -hmm. manage your assets, but not necessarily your next of kin. Your next of kin uh, implies legally right. that that person has a stake either in your life okay. or in what you own. In your life in the sense that he has your best interest, he or she has your best interest. Right. So she will decide in my best interest. Um, for whatever it's worth, after my demise, I think I can trust Linda mm. with these assets. Right. Um, we normally call it in law statutory nominations. Okay. Um, once you have appointed your next of kin, say in a pension scheme or say in a circle scheme, um, whatever is in there belongs to the next of kin. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not a subject of the court of succession. Okay. Right? Um, what is a subject of the court of succession is um, uh, your wealth where you do not have um, the person you would call a next of kin mm -hmm. in terms of statutory nominations. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me give an example for um, the viewers and the listeners to understand. God forbid I fall... Uh, um, that today, and I have a will, by the way. Um, oh, you do already? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting, eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if I fall that today, um, my will will be subjected to the rigors of the legislation as regarding what a will should contain. Okay. In that sense, we'll not be talking about the next of kin. Okay. We'll be talking about the beneficiaries as per my will. Okay. If I die and I do not have a will today, the question before the code of succession would be, who are my beneficiaries in terms of the hierarchy of mm -hmm. relationships? Okay. So blood relationships and marriage relationships. So um, um, there is the next of kin with the concept of beneficiary and the next of kin in the aspect of decision making. Mm -hmm. 
especially in terms of medical um, um, decisions. Mm. Yes. All right, interesting. Uh, Peter, I hope you have been answered, uh, Seria. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, if you have a question, we'll be coming back to you. But Peter, as a life coach, have you encountered, you know, cases that have been about, you know, next of kings or people who consider themselves as next of kings, having tassels here and there, perhaps those ones that are next of kings but are underage, you know, uh, living in limbo because they do not know who's going to handle what it is that daddy left behind or what it is that mommy has left behind. And I mean, just how then, you know, a gentleman's argument, perhaps before he gets to the court, do we get to handle some of these uh, concerns? Yeah, first maybe I should correct, uh, I'm actually not a life coach, mm. I'm a marriage and family therapist, All right. I'm a counsellor. It goes ahead, I'm a counselor. for almost years. And I, I operate as giving hope counselling services. Mm -hmm. Now uh, as a counsellor obviously, and a family and for family for that matter, we always do encounter such issues. Right. Uh, it refers to square, you know, because you get people who come to you, uh, after the death of, for instance, a, a, either, either, either party. Yeah. And 